So if you're like me, you're into retro games. And if you're even more like me, then you would like to make your games look in the same likeness as these glorious old classics like Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Officer Stone, The Hill of Perpetual Silence, and The House Where Evil is Residence. Who could possibly forget that title? Well, you're in luck, because today I thought it would be fun to just nip some images off the internet and cobble together something real nice. Today our subject will be Donald J. Trump. Because it's edgy, and because I, because I just want to. Sue me. Alright. Now, at the end of the day, I will be posting this guy for free on the interweb, so you can use him however you see fit. That's right. Feel free to use the model however you want. Retexture him, and use him for videos and projects. I know I will. It'd be a shame to let this thing go to waste anyway. Acceptable uses of this object include, but are not limited to, setting him up on a throne and putting a crown on him, nice and jingly and shiny, sitting around. Put a golden material on him and pose him just so, so he's a majestic statue. Or, if you hate the man, you could just nail him to a cross and set him on fire. Like roasting marshmallows. Or you can just use them however you see fit. I don't care. Do whatever you want with them. He's for free. So let's get into this. Okay, so before we begin, we need to set up our materials just right. Over here in the materials tab, you should have a object selected as well as a material. Once you have that done, what we need to do is go over here and until this arrow pops up pull this screen over here and then switch to the shader tab from here we can select shift a go down to texture no 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 go down to yeah texture image texture and then place the color node inside the base now whenever we do any updates at all with our textures we will be swapping them out here so for example I would go to open go to my textures and then where's my and then, I, and then I'd select it. And then every time I make a change, I would reload it. And, or, and if I were to go to texture pane over here, and I, ha I have one already saved up already. Future me, by the way. Every time I would do any edits here, what I would do is I would go to image and save as. Excuse me. Image, save as. And that would create a whole new texture. And then I'd bring that back into the project so I can keep, so I can keep editing back and forth between two bro the two programs. And everything works out just fine. Alrighty, back to the show. First up, we need to make sure that our UVs are in order for this project. I'll be using 256 by 256 textures, which just so happen to be the max texture size of the PS1. Normal rules apply here as anywhere else. The bigger something is, the more decal you can shove and cram into that little bastard. <clears throat> I've set up my UVs like so, and I'll get started with my images in my editor of choice. For my editor of choice, I'll be using Clip Pink Studio. A personal favorite of mine. I also don't own Photoshop, so there you go. If you're interested in any UV stuff, I do have some UV videos down in the description below. Or on the screen if I can manage that. So the first thing we need to do is take one of our images and cut it down into the basic shape that we want. We'll use the UVs mainly as a guideline as, as a guideline for the most part. And when we're done, we'll just adjust the UVs themselves to match the images which we place on the texture map. Place and scale your image, and, and don't worry too much about everything matching. We can adjust all of that later. However, if the colors don't match your photos, if they're too distinct and too different, I would recommend adjusting them as best you can, here and now. Blender has some nifty tools that we can use to help us with this. And plus, we'll be taking full advantage of the fact that this is a low-res texture. Trust me. We will be abusing the absolute bananas out of this system. Blender is the perfect tool. Now I'm sure you haven't noticed, but my picture of this dapper shirt doesn't come with a dress shirt or tie. So, should I just give up, try another picture, and start all over? No. I think I would rather just... Take this shirt row here, slice it up, and fashion it where it belongs, between the bosom of this fine blue piece of cloth. And of course, you can add a little neck too. I recommend using the burn tool. I find it's very helpful for creases and folds, and, and even 
human flesh details as well. And like before, once you're done placing your image haphazardly across the stage, you are then free to move your UVs around however you see fit to match the content. But wait, those clothes are still not matching. Hmm, this could pose a threat to national security, but once again, our masterful editing skills will come in handy really soon. And if you can't get exact, we can still use we can still use this to our advantage. But that's why using custom photos with controlled lighting is actually ideal for this sort of thing. I think this is a way more fun challenge. Arms, legs, and then we're ready to move on. Oh, the feet. You can't worship at them or use them to walk across hot coals without a good pair of rubber soles. You know, you know what I mean? This part was a bit weird. So I pretty much just put the shoe down and drew some socks. I found out later the extra detail that I put on the socks didn't matter. And also the way I did the feet was way more convoluted than I thought it was going to be. But in the end, I made it work. Now once we have our clothes all set up and ready to go, we can tackle the head. Or rather, the face. A face that is more like a melon on a billboard. So let's put Trump's face on his head, shall we? Now the way I look at the face with these low poly models is it's billboard. That's about it. It exists to mainly get the point across that this is indeed a face that you are looking at. We don't really need to worry about all the little curves and all the details and all that wishy-washy, nanny pandy high poly stuff. All we're looking for is a perfectly good silhouette, A, and something that will just project the face out into the world, flat enough to where you can see it pretty well face up. Now the problem is once you get off to the side, it's a flat tech. It's a flat texture, not meant to be curved, so it can look a little weird on the side, but once again, you'll be looking at it from the front most of the time, and it's really just to give the impression that, hey, this is the person that we want. That's it. And if there's any issues, we fix it later. That's the mantra for today. And once we get the head on the UV map, then we'll just move the UVs around as we see fit, just to make sure the face looks rather nice. Although I must admit, after a while, I found that that dark spot on the side of his face was ruddy and embarrassing and just was not working so what i did is i duplicated his face right okay and then i chopped off okay hold on hold on i chopped off the side of his face right as violent as that sound i chopped off the side of his face and and flipped it and moved to the other side so now he has two of the same sides of his face but flipped over to make a face that doesn't have a bloody shadow on one end. So it looks way better. Now, admittedly, the hairpiece was a little bit of a weirdo. If you plan ahead, it really won't be so bad. But regardless, I moved the UVs around in such a way as so as I can get the ears and the hair just a little bit right. Sometimes you just kind of have to fit with it and do the best you can. But you'll notice that once again, the colors don't always match. So adjust as you see fit. Adjust things how you can, erase things, edit how you can just to make it close enough for now. Because now we're moving on to the final editing process in Blender. Now we'll be using Blender's texture paint functions. Hello, future Michael coming at you. Um, what we're going to do for this section is we are going to grab the hex code of a color. So what we'll do is grab the eyedrop tool, select a color, go down here to our palette, double click, and we will grab the hex code. Copy that, and then we were, we're now about to put it into Blender. I just forgot to mention it before. Anyway, back to you, uh, past Michael. After doing the color swatch thing, I went back into Blender and selected the texture paint up top. Next, I pasted my hex code in the color swatch like so. I find using linear burn and color burn is a great way to add depths and lines and, and, and shadows to your object. This helps keep everything in the same color range so everything kind of just blends a bit better. Using add and screen lets you uh, put on highlights. I'll cover more on the texture painting in my next video, but for now, just watch and learn. All right, move on to the next section. Oh, and I've also been using mouse for this entire section. Yes, that's right. I'm providing you proof right now that you don't need all those fancy drawing equipments. It helps, but a mouse will do just fine. Especially for what we're doing. Next, I did the same for my clothes as well. 
By keeping the strength low, I can gradually add color to the parts of the texture that I would like to add some color gradients to, or just kind of blend the two different colors together. By using color burn and add or screen, I can add creases and folds and shadows, and sometimes even details, yes, onto my model. Whether that be making pockets more detailed and pop out more, or just adding just more folds so I can really, really sell the fact that, hey, this is a suit. And then for the hair, it's just shadows and highlights. It's best to manipulate your UVs in such a way where you don't draw over everything. But I'm pretty much just drawing on the hair that, for some reason, I just couldn't get looking right before. And it just works.